Amen. <clears throat> you know, um, we hear a lot in our world today about about freedom, don't we? We hear a lot about, um, you know, uh, uh, well, we're defending our freedoms. We're, um, but really, the more they speak of freedom, the more in bondage we become. Okay? And uh, they don't understand the, uh, who, gives, uh, who gives freedom, you know. And uh, Jesus actually quoted, let's go to uh, uh, John chapter, say, Luke chapter 4. Jesus actually quoted, uh, let me find the verse here in a minute. You know, uh, sometimes the Lord just kind of changes his, the uh, subject here. And uh, so, uh, let's see. All right, and um, says in 4.1, And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit to the wilderness. And, and He was tempted in the wilderness 40 days and, and, uh, and things like that. And in verse 14 it says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee and there went out a fame of Him through all the region round about. So he went into the wilderness to be tempted under the power of the Spirit. And he came out of the wilderness and he was uh, filled with the same Spirit, right? Yeah. And you know what he did in the wilderness? He overcame temptation. Now Satan had tried to tempt him to give up his liberty. To give up his freedom. And he tried to tempt him in the same way he tempted the first Adam. He tried to tempt him in the, to, in the lust of the flesh. And the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And that's how he tempted the first Adam. And they fell. And, uh, and they gave up their freedom. And they uh, let it slip away. And Jesus came back in the power of the Spirit, verse 14, into Galilee. And there went a fame out of, uh, throughout all the region around about. And he taught them in their synagogues, being glorified of all. So uh, Jesus taught where he could. He taught them in their synagogues. Um, and, um, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Now, he was a homeboy uh, in Nazareth. So he had been brought up in Nazareth. Now, Nazareth was kind of a... A, a city on the other side of the tracks, we'd say nowadays. You know, it was, you know, it's like, um, you know, one of his disciples when he called them he says, "Has anything good ever come out of Nazareth?" You know, and, and you know, uh, he said, "Well, come and see." You know, in the book of John. But uh, Nazareth was one of those cities where, you know, it was uh, it was kind of a rough city. It was um, uh, it was a uh, uh, known for uh, being rough. It had been known for. Uh, you know, those kinds of things. But that's where Jesus was brought up. He was brought up in, in the hood, if you will. And so uh, they, uh, he, he went into Nazareth, uh, where he'd been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So that's a good uh, custom to follow, isn't it? To go into the, uh, the, um, you know, to the synagogue to, on the Sabbath day. Now the Sabbath day here is not the Lord's day. The Sabbath day here is Saturday. Okay, so that was the day of rest in the in the Jewish uh, um, uh, day of rest, and stood up for a read. And so they, they went into the synagogue and they would read. And Jesus was a reader, as was his custom. He was a reader in uh, in that um, in the synagogue. So it, he had been doing it maybe for uh, you know a long time. I, I don't know how long he'd been doing it, but it, it was his custom. He went to the synagogue and he stood up for a read. Now he had just come out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. <clears throat> now when you get in the power of the Spirit, a lot of times people don't uh, receive what you say.
when you get into the power of the Spirit, a lot of times it says, well, I don't know if I want to get that radical about Jesus. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, I, I like my own little safe religion where I can just kind of do a few good works and, and, and God will accept me when I die. But that's not the case. Jesus said you're either for me or you're against me. You see, it's not, uh, well, you know, I have a little bit of, uh, you know, righteousness of the law over here, and a little bit of Jesus over here, a little bit of Baptist over here. It's not like that. It's either you, you get full of the Spirit, you either get full of God, you either get full of Christ, or you're none of His. Amen. That's what the Word says, isn't it? Yes. And see, that's, uh, uh, we're going to go into Galatians 5, we'll go in here in a minute. And, and the, the Judaizers were trying to mess up the churches in Galatia by adding uh, the, the works of the law with grace. You see, God saves us by grace, doesn't He? Yeah, by grace you are saved. That's right. Now, and so, uh, uh, so the Spirit of the Lord, it says, uh, and Jesus returned uh, into the power of the Spirit, and He stood up to read verse 17, and there was delivered unto Him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, where Chandra read this morning, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Okay? He found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, uh, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty men that are bruised. You see, it, our liberty doesn't come from the United States. Our liberty comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. Our liberty, we need to understand that He was the one that was anointed to come and to heal the broken heart and to set the captives free. It's not the, the drug companies. It's not any of these other stuff. It's Jesus Christ. He has come to set at to, uh, preach deliverance to the captives, recover the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Now, in the synagogue, there was a special seat in the synagogue. They was, you know, not, not this chair, but I mean a special seat in the synagogue. That when the Messiah came, he was to sit in that seat. And when the Word of God says that after he read, he sat down and every eye was fixed on him, he sat in the Messiah's seat. And boy, did that torque him off. <laughs> now look at this. And it says, uh, uh, it says, and all the uh, eyes of the synagogue were fast on verse 20, and he began to say to them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. I am the anointed one. I have come to heal the broken in heart. I have come. And you know, uh, you know a lot of times you know, we, we want to uh, you know, re rely on other things besides God. And verse 22, And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And, uh, and he said to them, You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus knew that they weren't going to accept him. But you know, he had to start in his own hometown. And he had to start by saying, this, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Verse 25. And so Jesus, you know, he, he don't ever preach a, a, a real popular sermon. You know, you ever notice that about Jesus? That's the truth. But I tell you the truth. Many widows were in the Israel in the days of Elijah when uh, the heaven was shut up three years and six months with great famine was throughout the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent save unto Sarepta, uh, Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. 
So what he was saying here is uh, a lot, there was a lot of widows in the land of uh, Ju you know Judea, but uh, Elijah was sent to a Gentile. Ooh. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of uh, uh, Elias, the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, saving name in the Syrian. Oh. oh, there was a lot of lepers, but none of them was cleansed except a Syrian. Well, we don't even like Syria today, do we? No. <coughs> Excuse me. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Boy, Jesus, you're not preaching the right things with my ear like my ears like to hear. You're preaching Gentiles, you're preaching I'm the anointed one, you're preaching all this stuff, and my ears just don't like to hear, and I'm mad. <laughs> How mad were they? And rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill whereon the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. They were that mad at him. Now, when we were in Israel, and we were in Nazareth, we went to the brow of this hill that they were going to cast him down. I mean, it's a sheer cliff with rocks on, you know, down there. They, they believed that this is the cliff that they were going to cast Jesus off of. And I couldn't figure out, <clears throat> by the time they got up there, they'd be too tired to cast him out. But I mean... <laughs> but anyway, they were in good shape back then. <laughs> But anyway, uh, they, uh, they were going to cast him out, and they were going to cast him headlong uh, uh, down this cliff. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way, and came down to Capernaum, the city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. You see, he didn't just uh, preach a you know, out of the Word. He was the Word. Amen? Amen? And so when he preached, and he preached under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, what didn't he? <clears throat> and that's how we have to preach today. Under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. I had this other sermon all done, but anyway. It was hell and evangelism, but anyway. Get, that, get to that later again. Now, the, the Galatian churches, that's why uh, the Galatia was a region, and there was several churches in that region. So it was the churches of Galatia. Um, and it says, um, and so anyway, the Apostle Paul went up there because what they were trying to do, the Judaizers, who they were called, would come in, these Jews, and it says, now, uh, the grace of God is fine, but to be a truly, uh, uh, you know, saved, you have to add the law with grace. You have to be circumcised. You have to follow the law, okay, in order to be saved. And so the uh, Apostle Paul was um, uh, going up there, and he was preaching the cross of Jesus Christ. He was preaching the grace of God, uh, and um, and the Judaizers they they opposed him on this message because it was grace alone. Because a lot of times, you know, we think and 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 we have churches today. We think that uh, okay, well, you know, I'm saved by grace, but man, I've got to help God out a little bit here. I, I've got to help God out by by doing good works. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't do good works. Because we were ordained to do good works that were before created in Him, right? And so, uh, I'm not saying, but if we work for a part of our salvation, we have fallen from grace. Alright? Now let's see what it says. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now this yoke of bondage was the Old Testament law. This bolt. Uh, this uh, this um, a yoke of bondage was the Old Testament way of doing things of uh, uh, and uh, of keeping the law. It says in verse two, "Behold, I Paul say to you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing." And so you can go ahead and be circumcised, but it's not, Christ isn't going to profit you in that. 
because uh, you were saved by grace, right? And so uh, it says in verse 3, For I tes <clears throat> testify again yes. to every right. man that is circumcised that he is a, a debtor to do the whole law. <clears throat> so if you were circumcised in the law, you were, a, you were a debtor to keep the whole law and never break it. Now let me ask you this. Is there anyone here today that has never broken any of the law? You've kept the Ten Commandments perfect there all your life. <laughs> Go ahead and raise your hand if you have. <laughs> Woody? Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sharon Beck says, oh no, that's not right. <laughs> So uh, you see, uh, he says, "Hey, if if you're gonna if you're gonna follow the law, and, and and how many people are messed up in their heads in the churches of of of, of doubt? I, I think it's doubting the salvation of God through grace, and I think it's doubting that well, you know, I got to keep this part of the law in order to help God out in His grace." You say. And um, it's not uh, it's not that now. Uh, the believer is set at liberty. The believer is delivered by the deliverer, Jesus, right? The Lord Jesus Christ, who conquered the world, the flesh, and the devil. He conquered hell and the grave. Salvation is by. The marvelous grace of God means deliverance and freedom. And get this, there is no bondage in grace. There's no bondage in grace. Because why? Because God has set you free. Set you free to do what you want and sin all you want? No. To set you free in the worship of God. To give joy to your soul. We need to understand that, that when we when, when God sets us free, uh, we are free indeed. Because uh, that's what the Word says. And if the Son of God sets you free, then you are free again. And the Word, if you uh, continue in the Word, uh, then you, uh, you can be free indeed, right? If you continue in the truth, the truth shall set you free. For we... Uh, says for verse 3, For I testify to you again that... Um, Every man that is circumcised, he's a debtor to the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. And here it is, you are fallen from grace. Mm. Now, does that mean that uh, a saved person uh, can fall from grace and go to have an eternity in hell? No, that's the only time fallen from grace is mentioned in the scripture. And you've got to take it in the right context. Because it's it's uh, it's it's uh, comparing the law and grace. If you're going to do the words of, uh, works of the law, then the grace don't have any effect on you. Just like Christ don't have any effect on you. All right, you're falling from grace. For verse five, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So we have to have that same Spirit that Jesus had, right? So we wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And that's what we're going to do out here. We're going to, you know, the reason why we put on the 4th of July is because we do not want people to go to hell. Right? Amen. We do not want people to go into a Christless eternity. Verse 7, you did run well who did hinder you that you should obey the truth. Now this persuasion come not of him that called you. So uh, uh, if you were hindered to not obey the truth, this, didn't, this persuasion didn't come from Jesus, in other words. And it says, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. So it doesn't take much false doctrine to get into a church. It doesn't take much false doctrine to get into a life. Uh, life and it doesn't take uh, much for you to uh, start trying to help God out. Abraham and Sarah tried to help God out, right? Got us in all kinds of trouble, even today. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, so uh, so we, we are, are inclined in the church, well, you know, salvation's fine, but uh, you know, if you really want to be saved, you got to become a good Baptist. Oh. Or if you really want to be saved, you got to, you know, become a good 
Pentecost and jump a pew or two. I don't know what you think. But you know, we need to understand that God saves us by grace alone. By grace you are saved through faith. And the faith in God is what we, uh, what we need. Because that, uh, because a little leaven, leaven is a whole lot. That's, a, you know, like a leaven. You know what leaven is? It's like yeast. And I don't know how it works. But uh, my grandmother used to come over to the house and she would make homemade bread. And man, she'd have this, uh, she'd make, a, she'd roll out this dough and, and, and all this stuff and, and, um, and, and you know, it'd be like that far down below the pan rim, you know, and she'd throw in that yeast. And uh, by the time that yeast took effect, that bread would be out and it would be flowing over the, the rim of that pan, you know. And man, she'd make homemade bread and, and you know, of course, we had uh, uh, fresh butter from the cow and oh. everything. And oh, yeah, but those were the days, man. I'll tell you. And um, but uh, but anyway, that that leaven, that yeast, it would leaven that whole loaf. You know that that's what happens in churches too. A little bit of leaven leavens the whole lump. Verse 10, I have confidence in you uh, through the Lord that ye, that ye will be none otherwise minded, but, that, that, but he that troubleth you shall bear uh, his judgment whosoever he be. Now he's talking about people that come into the church and trouble the church. Well, you know, you really, uh, uh, you, you really got to do something besides the grace of God. You say, so they trouble you. Says um, verse twelve or verse eleven, and I, brethren, yet if if I yet preach circumcision, so if I preach circumcision, if I preach the law, it says, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. You see, um, when I preach the cross of Jesus and your identification with it. That means you were to humble yourself before God and die to yourself and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And every day, you have to go to the cross. You have to follow Him to the cross, die to yourself, and pick up your cross and follow Him. So I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. I, you know, I'm just good, you know, I'm just a good old boy or whatever you say, a good old gal, whatever it is. But you know, it's a false gospel sometimes that we get a hold of. It says in verse 12, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? For this offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. Man, how would you like uh, the people that trouble the church just to be cut off? I would say praise God for that. <laughs> Everybody makes the pastor happy. Some by coming, some by going. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Now, for brethren, you have been called into liberty. Here's your calling. You've been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So this is what he's saying is, is don't use this liberty to sin. Don't use this liberty to uh, sin all you want and come back to God and say, oh, you know, God, you know. Uh, so don't use that liberty for the flesh. Um, but use it by love to serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing here the fourth, isn't it? We're going to love our neighbors. We're going to give them a piece of chicken. Now, we couldn't find chicken with skin on it, and I apologize for that. But, you know, it's skinless chicken, so Scott, you're going to have to do some magic on that. But, um, yeah. You know, chicken, that's good stuff in a chicken skin. It's good stuff. Oh, <laughs> we couldn't find it with skin on it. But uh, we got barbecue sauce, so. Anyway. <laughs> I shall love that neighbors. I've been inviting people all week. Come on down and eat some chicken. Eat a hot dog. Come on down, bring your kids down and, uh, you know, uh, enjoy the climbing wall and enjoy the, uh, you know, bounce houses and, 
you know, get a snow cone and a uh, soda pop and, you know, whatever we have out there. You know, uh, bring them on down. I've been inviting people to come down and just say, hey, it's, it's and, you know, there's, there's one people, I've, a couple I invited down, they've been telling me they're going to come to church. I'm going to tell them God's going to send you to hell for lying, but anyway. <laughs> I they said, no, we're going to, so they texted me yesterday, what can we bring? Can we bring some water? Go, no, we, we bought a whole pallet of water. Don't bring any water. <laughs> bring ice. Bring ice. So anyway, they, they have to bring something. So I told them bring ice. But anyway, uh, love your neighbors yourself. Verse 15, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. Now, we don't ever have people that bite and devour us, right? No. Most. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, capital S, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Now, Jesus walked in the power of the Spirit, didn't he? He walked in the power of the Spirit through temptation. And he walked in the power of the Spirit as he ministered in Nazareth. Now, he made the devil mad when he couldn't get the best of him. And he made the congregation mad when he preached in the Spirit. <clears throat> so either way, he makes people mad. It says, For the flesh lusted against the Spirit, the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So, you know, that's why, you know, when you go to do something wrong, I, I know it, I'm just, uh, you know, my own testimony, you know, the Holy Spirit says, sort of hey, knock it off. Amen. You know? Or I want to say something bad about somebody. The Holy Spirit says, hey, you watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're there, you know. <laughs> Uh, but if you are led of the Spirit, get this, you are not under the law. You're not under the law. You're walking in the Spirit. Okay? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, uh, which are these. Now it gives us a list here. The list of the works of the flesh. Adultery. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Now the first four... Um, compare to getting out of sorts with God sexually. Uh, adult, um, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lasciviousness. And we all, you know, have had trouble with that, right? You know, I hate to admit it, but there's a sleaze ball in every one of us. <laughs> now, and, but these are, these are works of flesh, isn't it? And it says here, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Now, let me ask you this. When the, when the, when the Pharisees were trying to add the law to grace, that was heresy, wasn't it? Heresies. It was a work of the flesh. All right. Verse 21. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of, uh, of the uh, which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And somebody says, boy, I'm, I'm glad uh, doing drugs isn't in there. <laughs> yes, it is. Oh, come on. Yes, it is. If you look up the word witchcraft in the, in the original Greek, it is the word pharmakia, where we get our word pharmacy from. Wow. Hmm. Wow. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Now, they tried to accomplish this in the flesh in the 60s, right? <laughs> Trying. Still all. Try. Love, joy, and peace, brother. Along with a bunch of uh, sexual impurity. So it was the work of the flesh, wasn't it? And they produced stuff like Charles Manson, yeah. stuff like that. Yep. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Now that's a tough one, right? 
You have to put up with people a long time, right? Long suffering, gentleness. Now that's a tough one too, right? Because you don't want to be gentle with people. You want to kind of gib slap them or something. You know? <laughs> How about uh, goodness and faith? And some of your translations there is going to read faithfulness. Okay. Uh, meekness. Now meekness is the opposite of pride. Meekness is being teachable. Okay. Temperance. Now temperance means having self-control. Okay. You're just not uh, doing as you please. You have self-control. And we live in a world that, you know, they say that if it feels good, do it. If you want to burn down a city, go ahead and do it. If you want to murder somebody, you know, just go ahead and do it. We'll let you out. Unless you're a Marine and you uh, get rid of some scum off the street, and right. then they right. want to, then they want to right. prosecute you for it. Exactly. Right. But if it was the opposite, oh, yes. mm. no problem. Yes, right. exactly. Liberty and justice for all, right? right. <laughs> you see, we live in a world that is run by the flesh. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. What are you going to make a law against being too peaceful? Yeah. You're going to make a law because you love too much? Probably. You're going to make a law because you're too joyful? Yeah. I'm sure the Democrats will come up with something. But, yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> Give them time. but they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Now sometimes the flesh comes back and torments us, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, yes. But if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. It's interesting, it says, don't envy one another. Envy and division go together. If you envy something, then uh, you're going to uh, want something that somebody else has, or whatever. And it causes division. <laughs> Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again <coughs> with the yoke of bondage. And I want to read um, according to the New Testament born-again believers are led by the Holy Ghost, not by the preacher in the pulpit. I'm to be your example. Sometimes I'm not too sure if I'm a good one. But uh, you're to be led by the Spirit. You say, well, Pastor Curtis, how, how can I be led by the Spirit? Well, we have to read the Word of God and I, this, this, this author here says, Truly born again children of God, do not crave the hog pens of the world, the cesspools of iniquity, and the ungodly lust of the damned. You see? And a lot of times, you know, that stuff creeps in, doesn't it? No, it does in my life. And I, when, when that stuff comes in my life, I said, man, I've got to figure out how to deal with it. You ever have the sin of doubt come in? Man, i got to figure out how to deal with this. I'm just letting you know, deal with it in the Spirit by the grace of God. You see, we are, are called to, to deal with it. What does the Word say? Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. And if we are kept by the grace and the power of God, it doesn't say we're going to be sinless. It says, matter of fact, 1 John says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth isn't in it. But on the other hand, it says we're not to sin. We're not to follow the lust of the flesh. We're not to follow that. So let's keep on encouraging one another. Let's keep on in the Word of God. 
Let's keep on praying. Say, God, I mean, you know, hey, I'm in this together with you guys. You know, these things come in. Sometimes the, <clears throat> these evil spirits are there. They just kind of attach yourself to you. You know, I mean, is it there you can, uh, you know, uh, advertisement on TV or something. Uh, you know, and you know they have all these uh, uh, sexual images and, and and all this stuff. Sometimes it just kind of attaches herself to you. Say, man, what's up with that? Pretty soon you're thinking impure thoughts or whatever. And you have to come back to God and say, God, you know, I'm going to walk in the Spirit. And because I know if I don't walk in your Spirit, I'm going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so um, we're, we've, we're all in this together. We're all going to have doubts from time to time. But here's one thing we don't doubt. We don't doubt the grace and the mercy of God. We don't doubt the love of God. He is the one that saves us. He's the one that shed His blood uh, for our redemption. He's the one that has delivered us. He is anointed to set the captives free and to heal the broken in heart. To set at liberty those captives. And there's a, you know, we've all been captives to something, haven't we? But God is anointed to set the captives free. And the Messiah has come. He has sat down made the synagogue mad, but that's all right. You know? Jesus still saves. You know, sin is still sin. Hell is still hot. Lost is still lost. But Jesus still saves. Right? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to ask if there's, uh, this morning, if there's any decisions that need to be made. I, I know God is dealing with the insides of some people this morning. Dealing with your spirit. Dealing, dealing with your heart. And, and I just want you, I, I want to let you know that I love you. I want to let you know that, um, uh, you know, that it's okay, uh, you know, to uh, go through emotions and, and things like that. But uh, we don't put our faith in our emotions we put our faith in the facts of the Word of God. You see, we put our faith in the facts of Jesus. And He's the one that keeps us. He's the one that guides us. He's the one that has delivered us. And no man is able to snatch you out of the Father's hand. Right? So I just want to encourage you to uh, keep on uh, keeping on today. Amen. Pastor Curtis. <clears throat> I want to be a member of the congregation. Okay. I was gone for a while, so I don't know if I'm still a member. But if not, I'd like to be rededicated or accepted or whatever. Okay. Um, is she still a member? Or? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to look. You have to look. look and see that she okay. That's okay. Come on up. <laughs> yeah. So she wants to become a member uh, again. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You've been serving and baptized, right? Yes. Okay. I just uh, I, I wanted to recheck on that. So. Yeah. You want to baptize me again? Uh, only if you want to. So, <laughs> you know, did I baptize you the first time? No. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll follow up with so, you. You know, because, uh, you know, we as Baptists, uh, we do not accept every baptism. You know, for instance, if somebody comes in, say that... Uh, has a it, they've been say they they were bad uh, sprinkled as a baby that's not tr r real baptism because they don't remember it and yeah. it says repent and be baptized every one of you know baby they're too young to repent they don't even remember their baptism or sprinkling um, so um, uh, you know we uh, repent and then we are baptized okay so that's the true baptism baptismal means to immerse in the Greek you know, you don't, uh, and then, you know, the person being immersed is a, a dead person being buried, and then the person being raised up is the person being raised to walk in newness of God, newness of Christ, okay? So, baptism. So, keep in mind what the symbolism of that is, what the testimony of that is, what the obedience of that is. 
and the identification with that is uh, the testimony of God. And so uh, we are uh, saved, we are baptized, uh, all by faith, right? Yes. And uh, because uh, it's not it's not a ritual or a rite that we go through. It's like it's not a law that we fulfill. Okay, now I'm baptized and I can go to heaven now. Uh, you know, it's called believer's baptism. If you believe, then you may be baptized, okay? So you got to believe first before you're baptized. So. A little bit of baptism this morning. All right, everybody in agreement with this, just say uh, amen. Amen. All right. And um, anybody that disagrees, come see me, and I'll, I'll say, uh, hey, you know, so-and-so don't want you in the church, so. <laughs> Any other decisions that need to be made this morning? Uh, salvation, baptism, you know, church membership, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you do what God tells you to do. Follow the Spirit. I'm going to preach the Word to you. But you follow the Spirit. You, you follow the Lord. You know, because I can't follow the Lord for you. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, it says. Right? So, I can't do it for you. You've got to do it yourself. All right, and then uh, Tuesday, uh, eight o'clock, Fourth uh, of July, come tell somebody else about Jesus, and uh, you'll be blessed. Uh, God will bless your life. Amen. Or if you can't tell somebody about Jesus, if you're too old, come down and eat. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Any other? Uh, uh, does anybody else have a word to say before we dismiss this morning? Maybe we'll get to hell and evangelism next week. I was, I was going to go to hell and evangelism this week because, you know, the evangelistic event. But, uh, we'll see what God has next week. But he, he couldn't get me out of uh, Galatians chapter 5, you know. I've been, Galatians chapter, he kept pounding on me. Galatians chapter 5. You know, so, you know. Okay, Lord. All right. All right, well, let's go to the Lord in uh, prayer. Father, thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. And Lord, I just uh, thank you, Father, for uh, uh, Bertha May that made a decision to uh, be part of us, Lord, again, Father. Lord, we just pray, Father God, that, Lord, um, you'd uh, guide us and keep us. I pray, Father, uh, that you'd keep everybody safe on the 4th and, and give, us, uh, give travel mercies to the ones that are away. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory in the church. And we just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you until we meet again. Bless you too, Pastor.